Hello everyone, welcome to my part three on Stackelberg competition. Uh, as we know, Stackelberg existed in part one, where there was an incumbent firm and there was an entrant firm, and they compete together in a sequential game. I mean, in part two, I broke away from the Stackelberg framework and treated it more just as there's an incumbent and a potential entrant, and I introduced the idea of entry deterrence. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about Firm 1's perspective and whether or not they ought to deter entry. So, here's the recap of where we've been. We defined our market as such. There's our demand curve and our cost functions. E is some entry cost, which is what will be at the core of our arguments today. Uh, here's what happens under Stackelberg. Here's what would happen if it was a monopoly maximizing profits and let's see what else did we do in part so we solved for Stackelberg in part one monopoly I just threw in for part two uh, in part three we solved for firm two's profits as a function of firm one's profit as a function of firm one's quantity uh, we did this because there's we outlined that there's potential for firm one to not actually maximize profits on either of these monopolist curve or this Stackelberg curve. Uh, we talked about how there's potential for the firm to do something else. And so what we're going to focus on in this video is this entry cost. And the lower the entry cost, the higher Firm 2's profits. Now, let's start with a very low entry cost one. What if the entry cost is low enough that Firm 2's profits look something like this? Well, if the entry cost is that low, then the decision of whether or not to push Firm 2 out of the market is irrelevant because Firm 1 could increase its quantity all the way up until its own profits go negative, and Firm 2 still makes a positive profit, so Firm 2 will enter the market no matter what Firm 1 does, and so Firm 1 will want to just play Stackelberg. So this situation is not going to be as interesting to us, uh, this one where we can't possibly block Firm 2. Let's do something a little more interesting. Let's do one that looks like this. So we've got a higher entry cost, as noted by the fact that Firm 2's profits shifted downwards. And at the end of Part 2, I said that if Firm 1 wants to deter entry, it should increase its quantity all the way up until just after the point where Firm 2's profit goes negative. So in this picture, that would be like choosing right here choosing just enough to make Firm 2 be negative. Now, in this case, with entry costs still quite low, uh, let's do an example. Let's say, I don't want to be yellow. Let's say E equals 100. So this is very low. It's possible to block Firm 1 from the market. Uh, oh, sorry, to block Firm 2 from the market. Firm 2's profits now are 12,700 minus 80Q minus 1,8Q1 squared. Uh, you can use Wolfram Alpha if you want to. You can review your quadratic formula if you want to. But what you're going to do is you're going to set their profit equal to zero and solve for Q1. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there are a billion videos on YouTube about the quadratic formula. I'm not going to make one. It's up to you. If the entry costs are low, in this case 100, it's possible to deter entry because, let's see, if the Q1 or sorry, the Q1 that sets Firm 2's profits equal to zero is 291 point something, 
which means that all we have to do in order to deter entry is produce 292 units of our good. If we produce 292 units of the good, it will push firm two's profits negative. But if we produce that much, the price falls a lot because we've flooded the market with the product and our profit from deterring is going to be lower than if we had just done the Stackelberg. Specifically, our profit for firm one from deterring is equal to about 7,008, which is less than the 8,100 that comes from Stackelberg. And so my conclusion is accommodate entry. And by accommodate entry, I just mean play Stackelberg. We could push firm two out of the market. It's possible. We can make a positive profit while doing so, 7,008. But we'd be better off just to let them in the market and play Stackelberg. All right, let's do a different example. Let's do, a second, let me erase a bunch of stuff. Let's do a different example here real quick. Let's try a higher uh, entry cost. Now let's try an entry cost of 1,000. So a higher entry cost is going to mean that Firm 2's profit shifts inward. Okay. Uh, same kind of idea. We would want to increase Q, Q1, all the way up until Firm 2's profit goes negative. Uh, the Q1 that makes Firm 2's profits equal zero is about 230.55. Which means Q1 deterrent now is 231. So before it was 292. Now, with the higher entry cost, we only have to produce 231 to push them out of the market. It's easier to push out a firm with higher entry costs. And because of that, let's see, so this is 231 for Q1 deter. Because it's easier to push them out of the market, it will now be possible for us to make more money if we deter entry and act as a monopolist, although not maximizing profits up here. Um, so that's supposed to be an arrow. Not maximizing profits up there. It's still more than if we played Stackelberg. And in this case, what's going to happen is pi 1 will be equal to about 12,589.5, which is greater than, which, sorry. Yeah, yeah, which is greater than the 8,100, which is, oops, I forgot to put the deterrent label, which is greater than pi one under Stackelberg. And so my conclusion here, instead of accommodating entry, I am better off by deterring you. So my conclusion for firm one is to deter entry. Okay. Now, there is a special case of entry deterrence, which I'm not actually gonna solve an example for. Uh, I just want to make you aware of it. If the entry cost is high enough, let me get all that stuff out of there so we know that that's not what we're doing. Whoops. If the entry cost is high enough, then profit will be low enough. We could get a situation like this, where my entry deterrence quantity is less than my monopoly quantity. If that's the case, we're in a special situation called blockaded entry, where my monopolist choice 
is sufficient to block you from the market. Uh, so with, in this case, you can think of a natural monopoly like a power company or something where the entry costs are high enough that there's only going to be one market or only one firm in the market and there's no incentive for anyone to enter. But let's see. Yeah, that's just a special case. In general, I want to write down a couple of rules. And one of them is for whether or not we should play accommodate. Which again, just means play Stackelberg. That's an eight. And we're going to do that if the pi one deterrent is less than pi one Stackelberg. We're going to deter entry if pi one deterrent is greater than or equal to pi one Stackelberg. And that's what it's going to break down to. We had to solve for firm two's profits as a function of firm one's so that we could, based on the entry cost, determine the quantity to drive firm two from the market. But once we did, we can calculate for profit and mess around with the graph and figure out if it's profitable to keep them from the market or if the entry costs are low enough, if we should just accommodate and play Stackelberg. So that's all for now. I hope this video was helpful. If not, bummer. Sorry to waste your time, but it's already wasted, so stop wasting more. Good luck, guys.